Welcome to another video. We're going to be taking the limit of this expression and if you're taking Calculus 2, it means you're allowed to use L'Hopital's Rule. If you're taking Calculus 1, you're not allowed to use L'Hopital's Rule. You have to do some algebra to be able to answer this. So let's get the Calculus 2 1 with L'Hopital's Rule out of the way and then we go to the algebra part of this. Now how do I know you're going to use L'Hopital's Rule? Because the first thing you do for any limit problem is to look at where it's going. If it is finite, just plug it in. So if we plug it in 3, we plug in 3 into this expression, we're going to get 3 squared plus 5 times 3. So that's 9 plus 15. It gives us 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. So we're getting 0 on top. We go down here. If we plug in 3, it's going to be 3 minus 3, and that's 0. So it's going to be 0 over sine 0. And we know that sine 0 is 0. So we have a 0 over 0 situation. And that is an indeterminate form, a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. And once you get 0 over 0 indeterminate form, L'Hopital's rule says you should take the derivative of the top, take the derivative of the bottom, then try to take the limit again, and you're going to get your answer. And that's what we're going to do now. So, because we know that we have the indeterminate form, so this actually is the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So it allows for L'Hopital's rule. It is the only indeterminate form that allows for L'Hopital's rule. So remember that. So we're going to say that if you apply L'Hopital's rule, I'm just going to use the symbol h, it means that we're taking the limit as x goes to 3 of the derivative d dx of the top, which is x squared plus 5x minus 24. And we're dividing it by the derivative of the bottom, sine 3x, 3 minus x, sorry, 3 minus x. So these are the two things we have. And what do we have? This is the limit as x goes to 3 of, if we take the derivative of this polynomial, it's going to be 2x plus 5. So we now have 2x plus 5. And on the bottom, what's the derivative of sine 3 minus x? Well, let's take the derivative of the outside. It's going to be cosine 3 minus x multiplied by the derivative of the argument, which is negative 1. So we have this. Now, can we plug in 3 and not have a problem? Let's see. If we plug in 3 to the top, definitely we're not getting a 0. So that means we don't have a problem anymore. Okay? Once you don't get 0 in both, there's no problem. That's your answer. So we have... If we plug in zero, 3 here, we have um, 6, sorry, 2 times 3, yeah, it's 6 plus 5, what's that? That's going to be 11. Okay, let's plug in 3 here. If we plug in 3 here, what do we have? That's 3 minus 3, 0. So what's cosine 0? Cosine 0 is 1. What is 1 times negative 1? That's negative 1. So your answer is 11 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 11. So that's your answer. That's the limit of this function. As you can see, the number 11 does not even appear in the whole expression, so you cannot predict by guessing. Now, that's for calculus too, because you're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. Now, if we're taking calculus 1, you're not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. You have to use something else that you know. And it's always smart for you, once you see the expression, to know that this thing involves a sign. There must be something about this expression that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x equals 1. You have to always have this at the back of your mind. Now, if you flip this, it's still 1, okay? Whether it's x on top and sine x under, or sine x on top and x under, you're still going to get 1 once you have this type of expression where this is causing this to go to 0, and this is also going to 0. So, let's do this. So, all you need to do, okay, let me write this. This is also true, limit as x goes to 0 of x over sine x. It also goes to 1. So I want you to picture it, since the sign we're dealing with now is under, you want the argument of sine under to be the same as the argument of sine on top. Okay? So, how do we do that? It means we have to be able to create x minus 3, sorry, 3 minus x on top. So let's see. We know the closest to it is factoring. So let's try to factor what we have here. This is going to be the same thing. 
as the limit as x goes to 3 of, if we factor the expression and just say what two numbers will I multiply to get negative 24, but when I add them I'm going to get positive 5. Well, it's going to be 8, positive 8, and negative 3. So remember that. So this will be factored into x minus 3, and this will be x plus 8. Okay, divided by sine 3 minus x. We're almost there because you see, we have generated something that looks like this. Unfortunately, this is 3 minus x, this is x minus 3. So all you have to do is change this to 3 minus x. So it's as if you have 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. But I don't want to write 2 minus 1, I want to write 1 minus 2. So I can write this to be 1 minus 2, then I put a negative in front of it because it's the negative, it's negative 1. So this is 1, this is negative, negative 1. So that's how to manipulate this. So we can say this is equal to the limit as x goes to 3 of, instead of writing this, I'm going to write negative 1, okay, let's put it away, times, I now write this as 3 minus x, x plus 8, all divided by sine 3 minus x. So, right in the middle, I have what I'm looking for. How do I know this is going to work? Because this is, when x goes to 3, this is going to become 0, this becomes 0. So that's the situation I have created. And that's what you should always do when you have sine and you're not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. Always look for this kind of expression. Make it, create it, manipulate it. That's what mathematicians do. So the final thing I'm going to do is take this out. So this is going to be the limit as x goes to 3 of, let me write this first. This is going to be 3 minus x over sine 3 minus x. Okay? Multiplied by, I know this negative 1 is here. I could have brought the negative 1 to the end here, but it doesn't matter. I can still put it here. Negative x plus 8 divided by nothing. That's it, because I already took this, so let me just put 1 here. So we know by the limit of a product rule that it is the product of the limit, as long as both of them have uh, finite units, uh, limits rather, you know that if you take this limit, take this limit separately, you can multiply them. So this is the same thing as this is going to go to 1 because it paints that picture that I painted before. So this is going to be 1 because this goes to 0 and this goes to 0, so that's 1 multiplied by, if we plug in 3 here, it's going to be negative 1, so let's put it like that, it's going to be negative 3 plus 8. And what does that tell us? Our answer is going to be 1 times negative 11, 1 times negative 11, which is equal to negative 11. So as you can see, it is not impossible, you don't have to always use L'Hopital's rule, maybe taking calculus too, this is the faster path. You don't have to do a lot of manipulation like this, but calculus one, this is the way to go. It is not impossible. Please like this video and leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.